it's been a couple of weeks since I started my garden and it's doing really, really well. I take some credit for that because I put in a lot of work to try to make the soil uh, be really welcoming to the seeds and I've been watering them. But most of the credit honestly has to go to the fact that it has been really, really sensationally hot lately. Um, I don't know what time of the year it is. I honestly don't know what the month is and I don't even know exactly what the temperature is. I never put a thermometer in my bug out bag, but it's been really hot. I've noticed it and all the plants have definitely noticed it, both all these wild ones and the ones in the garden. So things along those lines have uh, been going really, really well. And it's been weird for me because, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I was lighting fires to try to keep myself from freezing to death. And now the only time I ever really have to light a fire is if I want to like make a little bit of smoke to keep the bugs down because the bugs are starting to come out. And also is a, you know, a cooking fire for, you know, cooking my food. Uh, today I have an opportunity to do uh, a different way of lighting fires than I've been able to recently. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but up in the sky, there has been, I'm a, I think it's smoky. I think that there's a lot of smoke and dust and debris up there and I think it might have something to do with all the asteroids coming in. Uh, it's almost been like kind of a silvery sheen up there but today it's kind of cleared out and because I now have access to the sun I have access to a really great way of starting fires that honestly has got to be one of my favorite. Of all the different methods that I'm aware of with the exception of lighting a match this has got to be the easiest way to start a fire and in fact it actually has some advantages over lighting a match and I'll share with you what those are as I do it. All you need uh, are some old charcoals dry from your last fire. I always make sure that I keep some of these and when I'm when I used to go camping I'd like travel around I'd uh, keep a little tin of embers just like this so that I could start a fire easily the next time. These start really really easily. Uh, just got a little bit of tinder, got some dried pine needles and some little dried uh, pine branches and here's the most important thing right here and this is something I kept in my my bug out bag it's showing a little bit of its wear. It's got a kind of a break in there. But what this is, is just a Fresnel reading lens. Uh, people would, used to use this for like, if you wanted to you know, read a book and enlarge the type, you could use one of these. And it can also be used to focus the light of the sun and start a fire really, really easily. What I'm gonna do to begin is just take a couple of these pieces of uh, ember here and uh, select the site where I want to uh, start my fire. I think, oh, that one's falling apart. Uh, I think this one is good here because this one has this little groove here. It'll allow air to kind of get in there and it's really, really simple. All I do is focus it on my ember. Because the, uh, the charcoal is already, it's already black, absorbs the, the heat really easily. It's already starting to pop right there. I like it when these pieces are bigger because uh, I don't risk burning my finger as much. So I'm just blowing across it and I can already hear that there's, there's red ember in there. So the next step is just take that other piece and put it up next to it and then blow. Making a little sandwich. Oop, there we go, it's hot. Okay, once you got hot on both sides, Now I've got a little sandwich here with a little air passing between. Once you got two of these charcoals, both red hot, it's really easy to start the fire from there. Just gonna take them and place them in here so they stay against each other. Then I just start adding other little pieces of charcoal around them and on top of them. Once I got a nice little red core in there, I can start adding some fuel. All right, so here's some pine needles.
So this method here clearly has a lot of advantages because this tool can be used so many times over and over again. This thing lasted in my pack for years and years. It's only recently that it got the little break in it. But even with the break, it continues to function. And it takes up so little room in the pack. I take it and put it inside of a little padded envelope in the back of my pack. Maybe if I had something rigid, that would have made it so it never even cracked. But again, even with the crack, it's super, super useful. You can use it over and over again. And as long as you have sunlight, it's a really easy way to start a fire, especially if you have some of those old charcoals from your last fire. But it doesn't work at night, it doesn't work on a cloudy day. So I'm gonna talk about another way that you can start a fire that's also pretty easy, especially if you have the right materials to start with. My second favorite fire starting technique that does not use matches is definitely a far distant second as compared to using the magnifying glass. Whenever I have the ability to use the sun's natural, free, easy to use energy to start a fire, I always go that way. But if it's cloudy, if it's nighttime, you need a different technique. And if you want to save on matches, using a flint and steel is a pretty decent way to go. Uh, the two benefits I see of the flint and steel are, you know, as compared to the sunlight, you can use it any time of the day. And as compared to matches, it's really tiny and super compact. The number of uh, fire starts that I can get out of this little flint and steel set, if I was gonna do that with matches, it would be boxes and boxes of matches. It would take up an awful lot of room. And if you're trying to put something into a bug out bag or a camping bag, a flint and steel takes up very little room and you can get a lot out of it. That said, there are certain requirements that you really have to be uh, attentive to if you're gonna start fires using a flint and steel. And the most important one is what you're starting with for your tinder and whether it's dry enough. And I cannot enough emphasize dry. It needs to be very, very dry for these sparks to actually ignite it. What I've collected is some uh, little bits of kind of hay and grasses and some leaves that were baking out in the sun in the field over here. They've been baking there all morning. It's not enough for like, you know, it's all dewy in the morning, the sun comes up, 10 minutes later things seem dry, you collect it up. You really want to have the stuff really dry, dry, dry if you want to have any kind of a positive experience using this. So what I'm going to do with this material here is take it and kind of crunch it down into kind of like a powder. I want to get the pieces, little fragments of it to be very, very fine. And the reason for that is because when the sparks come off of the flint and steel set, they don't have that much thermal mass to them. They're very hot, but they don't have a lot of thermal mass. So you really want to make sure that the little bits that you're going to start burning also don't have a lot of thermal mass so that they are able to ignite. If you have a piece of tinder and it's connected to a larger piece and the larger piece can just kind of draw away all of that, uh, that heat from the ember that you have flying in there, uh, it's not gonna ignite. But if you can get really, really little bits, just little bits like powder, it's gonna work a lot better. Another thing that works really decent is pocket lint or any fluff, if you can find an old mouse nest, uh, you know, that, that'll work because they did a lot of the collecting for you. And usually mice nests are made in a place that is gonna be pretty, uh, pretty dry. All right, here we go. So a lot of the, the very fine stuff kinda feathered out down onto the bottom there. And I'm gonna try right here. The flint and steel set here I have is actually, I believe this is called a ferro rod set. Uh, but the essential idea is you have two pieces of metal, one scrapes across the other and uh, knocks off some super hot flex onto you know, your tinder pile. Before you do that, however, you want to make sure you have something to put on there to keep the fire going. And I've got these, some little bits of hemlock uh, bough, some kind of a dry stick, very thin that you can put on, because if, if and when you get this thing burning, you don't want to lose your, your fire. All right, so what I do with this is I take uh, this rod here and just hold it in position and then quickly scrape across. There we go. And you just kind of keep doing this until one of them catches. Well, I got a little bit there. I almost got one burning there. Try again.
I'm having to be really gentle with this. Alright, so obviously I was able to get that going, but it was a lot more difficult than using the magnifying glass. And a lot more of it had to deal with, uh, you know, what was available. You know, if this stuff had been maybe a little bit more humid, I maybe couldn't have pulled this off. So while the flint and steel or ferro rod is a handy technique and it's nice to have when you don't have access to you know, bright sunlight, you know, uh, they all have their ups and they all have their downs and whatever technique you use, and I would suggest you have multiple techniques in your, in your bag ready to go because you never know what the conditions are going to be, but whatever techniques you have in there, it's really important that you practice them because what I just did here was, you know, there was a fair bit of luck, there's a fair bit of experience, and there's a fair bit of almost, um, you know, indescribable, I'm going to use the word artistry, not to pat myself on the back, but to illustrate uh, that there are all these little subtle fundamental things that have a huge in, uh, impact on the outcome. The angle that I'm blowing the air through, exactly how much air is coming out of my mouth, you know, exactly uh, how much I ground the stuff down. These are all things that are really difficult to convey, uh, you know, just through, uh, you know, listening to someone describe a process. And it's really important to actually get out there, try it yourself, and get a real sense of how difficult it is. And it That was the biggest one yet. Yeah. I don't think it landed too far from here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that one out. Jesus, there's a ton of smoke up there. Uh. Now this is definitely becoming more of a definitely becoming more of a problem. I mean, one of these is going to land on me at some point. Let's see. Huh. Where is it? Oh, jeez. Oh, that's a lot of smoke. Oh, so much for clear skies for starting fires. Of course, at the moment, I suppose my challenge is going to be less starting fires and more about avoiding getting burned up in one. I ought to go check that out. That's gonna be, that's gonna be burning this way. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.